Good morning. I hope that I've got this um, working already. I do believe. <laughs> there we go. So um, today we are on the Millionaire Training, the Golden Principles that created the top network marketers of today. We are on page 243 with Jack and Julie Silva, um, their success story. But before we begin that, let's start with our usual um, Make sure to write down what you're grateful for, or at least think about it. Um, I am so grateful for the opportunity to be here. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for my boyfriend. I'm grateful for him bringing me a cup of coffee this morning. I'm grateful for uh, waking up and just having a brand new perspective and just um, just loving what I'm doing, you know? So I'm, I'm so grateful for this, this life that I'm creating. And then today I'm going to... Um, continue. My goals for today are to do my daily DMOs, to finish off my, um, to, to finish off the pipeline for the sequences that I'm creating. They're just about done, but, um, with lots of things going on. <clears throat> so I'm so close. So that's my goal so that I can um, really get this up and running. So let's go ahead and get started with the morning meditation. So take a deep breath, a deep breath of life. The Talmud says every blade of grass has an angel leaning over it, whispering, grow, grow, grow. That blade of grass will press through cement, seeking the light. And that same pull of becoming is on and in you. It is the spiral pull of becoming that is everywhere present in the universe, for the universe itself is ever seeking fuller, freer, expanded life. And you are part of this wondrous spiral of becoming. Your very DNA is a spiral. And you feel that pull to the more. Learning to work in concert and cooperation with the great laws of the universe. Open doors of possibilities that prior would have seemed completely impossible and only for the few, not you. But now, through your interest, your study, and your willingness, you're beginning to understand that not only is dream building your right, but your responsibility. For you have come here to give the gift of you, without which the fabric of creation is incomplete. For you did not create you. You can't even breathe you. You're being breathed by the great spirit of life itself, and something wonderful is happening with you right now. It is this thing called life. You've been given a mind and a body, emotions and spirit. You are spirit having a human experience, using the mind and body and emotions as your expressing field for what you ultimately will choose as the demonstration of the life you know. So in this sacred moment, activate the faculties you have and know this, you are an image maker, made in the image and after the likeness of the one who gives you life, your mind thinks in pictures. Okay. So you are here to create this life that you are given. So let's create. So we are gonna go ahead and start again on page 243. Um, Jack and Julie Silva, the president's team, Herbal, Herbal Life International. Julie and I met Larry Thompson in 1987 through a conference call. At the time, he was vice president of Herbal Life and we had just joined the company as distributors. Larry was talking about how you could take these 
nutritional products to the market and changed people's lives. Well, at the time, and at that time in our lives, I was working about 12 hours a day selling Cadillacs and Julie was my inventory control manager at the dealership. I wasn't earning what I felt I was worth and Julie was open for opportunity. I will never forget that first conference call with Larry because we got so excited when he said, you've got to fly to Chicago and we'll meet you there and at a distributor workshop. I couldn't believe we were going to Chicago to this business meeting. The only other time I had been on an airplane, I was five or six years old. I couldn't remember much about it. And now I'm 25 years old, getting on an airplane, going to Chicago to be trained by the Larry Thompson. We were excited because we were now business owners and we believed we could make the business work. Going to that meeting in Chicago changed our life. I was an athlete growing up and Larry was just came across to me like, like Vince Lombardi, the great football coach. He spoke my language and I felt honored to be in the same room with, his, with this man. There were many other successful distributors at this workshop, at this business workshop. I was very excited for us to be there. That's when I got my hands on the millionaire training tapes and they became a staple in my daily routine for growing our distributorship. I took the millionaire training seriously. It gave me the courage and the confidence that I could do this. And it gave me the fundamentals, the foundation, and a new way of thinking that I never thought before. For example, I didn't realize procrastination is one of the biggest business problems people have. I procrastinated in a lot of things and I had my weaknesses that I knew I had to fix. I had to change some old habits and replace them with new habits, like doing things you don't wanna do first. Get them out of the way. Don't put them off until later, which opens the door for procrastination. I can honestly say, I don't think I would have made it if, it, if I didn't become a serious student of the millionaire training every single day in those early days. As a kid, I was always setting goals and making plans. So when Julie and I worked every day, we had our goals and plans and we would compete with each other to push each other. I didn't have a problem with that one, but here's what I didn't understand about goals and plans. I was taught you had to write them down and check them off. I had a problem with writing them down and checking them off. I struggled with that until Larry said, listen, a goal is something you have to have and you, you have to have it no matter what, it's yours. It's just a matter of time until it happens. He said, you don't have to write it down and look at it every day. A goal is something you have to have. And Julie and I had to be successful. We had to make it happen. So that really made a huge difference for us. But the reality is a goal is something that you have to have. And if you have it, it's, it's yours. It's just a matter of time to remember that. In the millionaire training, I also learned about communicating with feelings and not words. See, I didn't do well in school. I didn't have good English. I was concerned when I, when I thought it was the words that were important when talking to people. What I learned is how, how you feel about what you say is more important than the words you use. That was huge for me to understand. The millionaire training also helped me tremendously with not just putting a plan together, but also following through on my plan. It taught me about holding myself accountable. If you talk to enough people every day and stay consistent, then you're going to be successful. The millionaire training laid down the framework for us. Julie and I had to stay inside of that framework to be successful. We had to stay very consistent to talking, at talking to lots of people every day. If we had operated outside of that framework, we would not have made it. Our first year, we became one of the top achievers in our company. Our fifth year, we achieved the top 1%. And still today, 30 years, 30 plus years later, Julie and I are among the top 1% who are most successful in our industry. We thank God every day for the opportunity and for meeting the great people that we have met along the way. I only can imagine where we'd be without the millionaire training. It's made our life greater than we could have ever dreamt being able to provide stability for our family all, all these years. Julie and I have been married for over 30 years since, be since our beginning in Herbalife together. We have a great life, truly living the dream, as they say. I can tell you the most important thing we have done is to recruit lots of people into our business. You've got to bring in new people, front lines every month, and you have to develop a good retail customer plan. Of course, you, you feel bad if someone doesn't make it in your business. But I never get wrapped up in feeling really bad if a person didn't make it in our business. It's not our responsibility for others' success because we are all independent, independent distributors. Our responsibility is to bring in new customers and recruit new distributors 
who do the same as we do. We lead by example, and that's how we've always done it. We've been there when our people needed us. Be there when, when they call you. Be there for them when they reach out to you. We never thought about, we never brought our problems to our people. We would listen to, our, to others talk about their problems, and we always say with compassion, okay, now let's talk about your business plan this week. What's going on? Today, I will do a video room. Today, I will do video room meetings with distributors, and I'll do one-on-one -on -one calls with distributors. I'll even go out into the streets with them and teach them by example. We'll go out and talk to people, and I'll show them how to talk to people about the products. There are only a handful of things you need to say about your products. We show them what to do until they can do it. If they don't do it, I just go find someone else who will do it, and we talk to people, and we'll talk to people. I don't spend too much time on trying to convince people to do what I do. I spend most of my time finding people who believe in what I'm doing, what I'm sharing with them. And that is my best advice to you. Thank you, Larry and Taylor. It's my privilege for Julie and me to be part of this amazing story. So um, I just want to touch on that. I, you, it's really important to get the basics down and to use, to really believe in this whole concept of use talk demo. I'm, I'm starting to see results from using just this concept. You know, the more people that you talk to and you just share with them about what it's done for you or what it's done for others that, you know, that, you know, it really changes things. And you're not sharing when you start sharing from a place of conviction, instead of trying to convince, it really does shift the way that we think, right? So we're going to move on to Lisa Grossman, top ranked distributor for Prove It. Although it would be many years until I had the privilege to meet Larry Thompson in person through the millionaire training, he had been my coach, my mentor, and I felt my friend since almost the beginning of my career. Through the stories and teachings, I was able to shift my thinking and understand the principles of our profession and learn the strategies to build it successfully by duplicating it with others. The impact that it had on me was created, has created a ripple effect in my business and sphere of influence that reverberates to this day right? So let's shift our thinking and really dial into this. When I started in this profession, there was no internet. Self-help was a shelf in a bookstore. There was little to no gen generic training available. And, that, and what there was, was limited to what to do, but do little to address the mindset you needed to do it effectively and consistently. Moreover, even then, even that was dependent upon the company in which you happen to find yourself. Network marketing came into my life when I was in my mid-20s, and, and in some circles, I would have been considered a success financially, but I was, in fact, very unhappy. As I learned and often share with, people, with others, and when I speak, even if, you are, if, even if you win the rat race, you are still a rat. However, the freedom I caught a glimmer of, of spoke. However, the freedom I caught a glimmer of spoke to my soul when I leaped in and very quickly realized that I did not know what I was doing and I didn't understand it enough to figure it, figure it out. What I did understand from what I was hearing was that getting to events was important. So I committed to going to the next event in Toronto. I was told that if I hit a certain rank, I could attend a special school where the top earner in the company would be the trainer. Somehow I got to that rank. I had to do it. I had to learn the secrets of what they were alluding me. I didn't realize at the time, but qualifying to go to that school was the first big lesson that I needed, that I learned. I was already different by the time I got there, so I listened with different ears. My first big wake-up call was how, I, how impressed I was with the top earner simply because his background prior to network marketing was so unimpressive. He was my age, he had been a waiter, and yet he was earning in a month what most people at the time would have been happy with is an annual income. What stood out for me was rather than finding what he said to be complicated, it was his gift of simplification that seemed to be the secret of his success. Over the course of three days, he kept referring to his mentor, Larry Thompson, and how much he had learned from him. He spoke about Larry's The Millionaire Training and how he instilled listening to that coaching via cassette tape consistently. I knew I had to have that program. Of course, it was not available in the generic format at the time as it had been designed for Herbalife the extraordinary company that Larry founded. It didn't matter to me. With some searching and digging, I managed to get a set and it became my Bible in the first decade of my career. I listened to it over and over again. 
I filled notebook after notebook with what I had learned and rose through the ranks in the incomes in my endeavors. I took a hiatus from network marketing for several years when I decided to come back to it. I could not find the tapes and I wanted them. One of the earliest things I learned from Larry is what you feed your mind is paramount to achievement. And that was the best mental food I'd ever come across. So in the early days of the internet explosion, my search on eBay led me to another set and I started listening again. I am not sure why the seller wanted to let these tapes go, but I'm so grateful he did because I attribute them to a part of my success today. What was amazing to me is once again, as I was in a different place, I, was, I listened to the tapes. I understood things in ways, in ways I didn't the first time. I realized that it all comes down to the stories that we tell ourselves, the narrative that becomes our truth. This stage of my growth was more internal than the first go around had been. And the millionaire training is so timeless that while much has changed in the way of technology and opportunity, human nature really never changes. And the information was every bit as relevant 10 years later and still remains today, nearly 20 years after that. Though I started, though I had listened to Larry almost every day for 10 years, it was only then that I realized it was more about what we think, our mindset, and the story that we tell ourselves that is the real game changer. So make sure you change the projector. <laughs> One thing Larry always emphasizes that we is that we're worried about what we feed our bodies, and we do not spend enough time worrying about what we feed our minds. Once it hit, that hit home for me, it changed everything. I started to realize that the narrative we tell ourselves is the loudest of all because we're the only ones that talk to ourselves constantly, 24 hours a day. And it was very easy to go out and feed your mind with things that will reinforce a story that doesn't serve you. That mindset will keep you from contributing at a high level and, and not allow you to realize that you see things from a narrow confine of where you are rather than where you could be. So shift your mindset, really look at the bigger picture. Consistency and repetition will hone your skill, but what you think and how you see the world will directly influence if you will actually stick it out and not quit. Larry taught me to keep the main thing, the main thing. People often think that the main thing is a paycheck or how they're, or how much they're earning. Money is part of this business, but if the leadership and the team expansion don't happen, you're not going to keep the money or maintain what you did to get it because you can't achieve success independently. You can make somebody who is very highly evolved in their thinking work hard and be a re record salesperson, but that doesn't guarantee that they're going to be able to lead others well. It's only by building depth that you can create a legacy and provide a means of change to the people around you. Constant personal mental growth and listening to or, to or reading the powerful truths over and over is what makes this happen. You can hear something and say to yourself, that makes sense. And then listen to it again and think, now I see something I didn't see before. But eventually, if it resonates with you and you're immersing yourself in it over and over again, you can articulate it to others because it's no longer what you hear. It's what you think. It becomes embedded in you. We're not talking about duplicating strategies that have worked, but duplicating leadership. Take Michael Jordan, for instance. Yes, he was a natural talent by ability, but he became the Michael Jordan we know because he practiced more than anyone. He shot more free throws than anybody to the point that he could pick up basketball and do it in his sleep. He was in his own. If you see excellence in any space, you're gonna find the same level of dedication. The fact that anybody can join the network marketing profession is both the greatest, its greatest strength and its biggest weakness. You can have people on your team with the highest level of commitment and no or no commitment at all. Larry taught me to be selective in who I recruit because you agree to work with, with, to work for them. If I meet someone and they're and they whine for an hour, the last thing I'm going to do want to do is to be in business together. When I finally had the privilege of meeting Larry and heard him echo what I thought my thoughts were, only because I'd heard them so many so many many times, I remember thinking, "Oh my gosh, we think the same." And then I realized that he is the person that planted those thoughts in me. Those thoughts were no longer repetition or imita imitation of Larry. They had become embedded in me with, with a whole different complexity and depth. It's kind of like learning to ride a bicycle. At first, you're uncomfortable and, every, and aware of every movement you're making. But with practice and repetition, it becomes second nature. It's no longer a struggle. And you're going to 
you're going off muscle memory. It's the same thing with what, with putting Larry's teachings into practice. One day you're thinking the same thing as they are thinking without even trying. That's when you know everything has changed. You're succeeding, achieving ranks and accomplishing the things that you set out to do. It's working because you're following your men the mentors you've chosen to follow. One of Larry's most un underrated qualities and greatest contributions to is his ability to choose the right words matched with the proper delivery. He understands the language that language matters. One little nuance in the delivery of the message greatly can change how it's received. It's more than just words themselves. Larry had his own mentor, Bobby DePew, who he studied and learned from. And Larry would listen to the speeches over and over on a on reel to reel tape. Larry would master his voice inflections, timing, and the language that he used. Often people don't realize that even though it's sometimes useful to simplify a message, you can't always simplify the message to the point of what I call fortune cookie wisdom, where the message loses all meaning. meaning. The great minds cannot articulate everything they need to, into 140 characters on Twitter. <laughs> when I started listening to Larry and realized language matters, I wanted to be able to communicate with people and paint a picture for them. I wanted to be able to get people to see things that could change their life. And if people don't see it, they're not going to aspire to do it themselves. What Larry taught me was the importance of telling a story. I've been in this business for over 30 years, and I finally got to meet Larry in person when we spoke at the same event. I was freaking out because here was this icon I looked up to for a quarter of a century. I base so much of what I do on his principles. I think every successful person has been guided by mentors if they want long-term success and getting to meet one of mine was a massive moment for me. As I think back on Larry's teachings and influence on my career, one of the critical points that sticks out to me is this phrase, marry the process and divorce the results. You have to understand that job is not, our job is not to convince anybody. And whatever they decide at the time doesn't mean it's the final answer because as Larry says, the fortune is in the follow-up. To understand that we are not here to convince anyone to do anything. And if they say, if someone says no, that is not a personal rejection. However, people decide today is just for that day. Whatever people decide today is just for that day. And that no does not mean never. Don't respond in a way that robs yourself of the ability to have a follow-up conversation the next day or the following week or in a couple of months. It's all about the process and you can't get emotionally attached because everyone has a right to their choice just as you do. Your goal is to have a wealth of people to follow up with it to all times and to operate in a way that people wanted that seventh exposure from you because you didn't make them angry the first six times you called. I've been revisiting the millionaire training for years and I'm always gaining something new from it every time I listen. Something I continually take away from Larry's teachings is not to prejudge and to get so caught up in my stuff that I forget that it's about someone else. I need to continually touch base with people because new timing can create massive different results. Even though the millionaire training was recorded in 1981, the knowledge is timeless. Wisdom doesn't change. It's timeless because we're dealing with human nature and that doesn't follow trends. Delivery mechanisms and, technology and, and techniques vary, but concepts and principles don't. They are the DNA of the business and the hallmark of the longevity and the legacy of success. The legacy I am building now includes my daughter, Hillary. I'm beginning to see a lot of second generation people coming into this business. The millennials coming into this profession are more likely to think for themselves. They are not motivated by the same things that motivated my generation. They tend to be more min minimalistic and less interested in the big fancy car. They are all about the company that makes the car being social, socially responsible. Nowadays, with the internet and the gig economy, if people don't want to have a boss, they have many options. When I was young, I didn't have an education or a, the right pedigree. They weren't, there weren't many options to be an entrepreneur outside of network marketing. Today, more people are choosing this profession because it gives them the ability to have a legacy. You have to have the opportunity to teach somebody everything you know and hope that they do it better than you. And if they're successful, you're compensated accordingly. When, where else do you see that happen? Where can you 
teach somebody all your secrets and make money because they do it better than you. That gives me great hope. I do see a bright future for our profession, one where my daughter can excel. Network marketing had become a much more inviting atmosphere than it was when I started. When I began, you had to be pretty tough and have thick skin. Now I, and now I have hopes that my great-great-granddaughter will be working from home presenting to someone somewhere across the globe with a hologram, but utilizing the same principles and guiding wisdom that's been around for generations. I'm very proud of what Hillary is accomplishing in this field. Being the second generation of this business, people often attribute your success to your parents. So you have to work much harder to get your parent in, to get out of your parents' shadow and prove yourself to others. I had her listen to all of the people I respected because I like, because like I said before, wisdom is wisdom, no matter the time or the place. When Hillary went off to Larry's conferences, she came back and asked me, have you heard of this guy? And all I could do was laugh. Have I heard of this guy? Have I heard of him? I was raised on him. Hillary was raised on the same principles and the values as all of us because long-term success leaves clues. Larry's concepts have stood the test of time because they teach you how to think rather than what to think. There are no shortcuts to success, but there is the leverage that you can gain when you're educated by people who have accomplished what you want to, to achieve and are headed where you want to go because you're invested. They spend, spend time with the people who want to open people's minds. I'm thankful for Larry Thompson that he has spent his career doing just those things. He has a legacy he's built and has never let any obstacles stop him. I love the fact that he's never retired. He's still out there giving all of his energy to sharing information with another generation. I respect and admire the fact that Larry has continued when it's no longer about money, but out of desire to help others and to pass along this timeless wisdom so that pebbles he has dropped in the pond of this wonderful profession will continue to ripple around the world without end. So um, this is so true that we really want to stay in, in this, in this presence, in this teaching and continuing to, um, to really embody this, these thoughts into our, you know, into our becoming, the more that we learn and the more that we realize that we want to do things that are the simple, the simplest way. And because it's duplicatable. Um, I was just, like I said, I think it was yesterday, I was sharing with um, one of the people in our team that um, had done that. And I did that early on, you know, you learn and you're, you're trying to mimic, you're trying to learn all of this stuff and you're trying to make sure that you've got all the answers when that's not the best way. The best way is to share the tools, to learn, to learn the information enough that you know where to point somebody when they're asking the questions. So if somebody's asking you about an opportunity, you can point them to the tool. If they're asking about a product, you can point them to a tool. If they're asking about um, results, you can share your own and you can point them to somebody else. That's what it's really all about. It's duplicatable and it's teachable. And, 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 every, and you can build leaders by doing that. Just keep it simple. And that's what I'm honestly doing by being here doing these readings every morning, because this is, it's helping me to embed all of this into my own being, but it's also helping me because as I'm embedding this into myself, I'm speaking the language clearer and I'm helping other people understand that this is really, it, it really is simple. We just have to get out of our own way, you know? So on that note, I'm going to close. Make sure you get out there and you do your daily DMO. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.